I've made a few videos talking about countries which no longer exist. In this video, I want to do something similar, but also different. I'm going to talk about countries or civilizations that also no longer exist, but that have disappeared for a specific reason. They were conquered and destroyed or annexed. Let's jump right into it. Starting with ancient Carthage. They didn't have a flag. The banner I used on the thumbnail uses the symbol of one of their goddesses, Tanit. It was a religious and supposed state insignia, while their military standard was this one, of a crescent facing upwards and a circle below it. Carthage was an ancient Phoenician city-state and civilization based in present-day Tunisia. It was founded around 814 BC and in a few centuries it grew to become the center of the Carthaginian Empire, a major commercial and maritime power that dominated the western Mediterranean until the mid 3rd century BC. After consolidating its power in the surrounding area, they expanded into Corsica, Sardinia, Sicily and the Iberian Peninsula. As the dominant power of the Western Mediterranean, Carthage inevitably came into conflict with many neighbors and rivals, and one of these would end up being its doom, the newly born Roman Republic. This Carthage-Rome conflict led to the Punic Wars, three of them to be precise, with each of them the power of Rome grew as they defeated the Carthaginians in battle, and the ancient trade power of North Africa began dwindling as they lost territory in each of the peace agreements. By the Third Punic War, Rome invaded Carthage in 146 BC, storming the city and sacking it. As if that wasn't enough, they also executed most of its population and completely demolished the city. And so, a once great empire was completely razed and erased from existence, only remaining in our historical records and through the ruins that we can now find to the east of the city of Tunis. We noticed that many of these ancient states ceased to exist because of wars with their neighbors and the invasion of enemy powers. We could even say it was because they were nations in conflict, which quickly brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a free online strategy game that gathers millions of players worldwide. You fight up to 64 other players in real time in games that can take weeks to complete. The game is set in the late 20th and early 21st centuries and features modern day weapons and technology. Your objective is to take over the world, define your own strategy, build powerful armies by combining dozens of different units such as infantry, tanks, planes, and fight for war world domination in a challenging PvP environment. I really like the long-term strategy element that it has. A lot of times I play games and I get annoyed at how quickly they end. Join a huge community of players in the game and also via Discord where you can make alliances with each other. They'll be hosting a special game for people who click the link below. Just create a profile, type general knowledge in the search bar and enter the password knowledge. Also, general knowledge viewers are getting a special gift. Through the link below, you can get 13,000 in-game gold and one month of a premium subscription for free. This offer is available for 30 days only, so click the link in the description, choose a country, and fight your way to victory. Now let's get back to the video. Moving a little to the east, but remaining in North Africa, Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt was a civilization concentrated along the Nile River. It went on for a long, long time and is seen as one of the earliest developed civilizations in history. Predictions point to it lasting from 3000 BC to 525 BC, around 26 different dynasties over the course of 30 centuries, almost 3000 years. Starting in the early period, moving on to the Old Kingdom, the Middle, the New, and the late periods of its existence. Through most of these periods, ancient Egypt expanded and grew, and its power was matched by few or none in the world. But then, an age of decline arrived. Some say Pharaoh Ramses III was the last great leader of the kingdom, and after his passing, Egypt went into an age of decline. This was around 728 BC. Egypt split into two kingdoms. The Nubians, an old enemy of theirs, attacked from the south and conquered some land. They created a new dynasty, and this was the 25th in ancient Egypt. Having adopted Egyptian culture and religion, the leader of this ruling dynasty called himself Pharaoh. A few years later, in 671 BC, the Assyrians attacked the Nile Delta. Egypt was effectively crumbling apart, not being able to stop these invasions from its former 
and sometimes new enemies. In 525 BC, the greatest threat arrived, and Persians conquered Egypt, after having also conquered Babylon and ending the Neo-Babylonian Empire. At this point, ancient Egypt had come to an end as the world once knew it. Finally, in 332 BC, Egypt was released from Persian rule by Alexander the Great, who promised to respect Egyptian culture and proclaimed himself Pharaoh, but a Greek slash Macedonian one. When Alexander died, one of his generals took over, Ptolemy, beginning the last Egyptian dynasty. But this was not really ancient Egypt anymore. It was now the Ptolemaic kingdom. The last ruler of it was Cleopatra VII, and after her death, Egypt became a part of the Roman Empire. After this, ancient Egypt was fully destroyed. A once great civilization of ancient times, which through many internal factors did not manage to remain strong enough to repel its attackers and fell to its invaders one after another. After the Romans came more Persians, then more Arabic rulers, eventually the Ottoman Empire and independence as today's Egypt, which maintained some territorial inheritance of the ancient empire. But having gone through so many changes and so many different rulers and forms of existing that it no longer carries the full legacy of ancient Egypt as it once existed. Going north to Europe, we have Volga, Bulgaria. Volga, Bulgaria was a historic Bulgar state that existed between the 7th and 13th centuries, around the confluence of the Volga and Kama rivers in what is now European Russia. My depiction of it on the thumbnail is a little off geographically. Now, the thing is, it's so ancient that we don't really know much about it. Most of the information comes from records of other peoples or from excavations modern humans have made. The original Bulgars were Turkish tribes who settled north of the Black Sea. Around the year 630, they founded Old Great Bulgaria, which was destroyed by the Khazars in 668. And so, having their first large state destroyed, they moved west. During their westward migration across the Eurasian steep, they absorbed other ethnic groups. And once they got to the Volga River region, they settled again. Although a few years later, moving further west and south to what is now current Bulgaria. But the ones who stayed in that Eastern European region started creating Volga Bulgaria, a state which adopted Islam as its religion in the year of 922. The Volga Bulgars even attempted to convert Vladimir I of Kiev to Islam before he chose Christianity. However, Vladimir rejected the notion of Rus people giving up wine, which he declared was the very joy of their lives. The state controlled much of the trade between Europe and Asia before the Crusades, which made other trade routes available. The capital, Bulgar, was a thriving city, rivaling in size and wealth with the greatest centers of the Islamic world. Their trade partners ranged from Vikings in the north to Baghdad and Constantinople in the south, from Western Europe to China in the east. They were somewhat always in conflict with the Kievan Rus because of their shared borders, but the issue wasn't too bad for them. It became bad, however, in the year 1223, when a new enemy arrived, Genghis Khan. They initially managed to defeat one of the Mongol armies, but as it was customary in any of their defeats, they just came back stronger. And in 1236, the Mongol hordes returned. After five years, the entire country was subjugated and destroyed, later becoming divided into many small principalities subject to the Golden Horde. Still in Europe, but further north, the North Sea Empire. This is also known as the Anglo-Scandinavian Empire. It represents a personal union of the kingdoms of England and Denmark between 1013 and 1035, a pretty short existence. This was towards the end of the Viking Age. The first king to unite all three kingdoms was Svein Forkbeard, king of Denmark and Norway in 986, then conquering England in 1013 as well. He died a year later, but his son Knut inherited much of his power. Although apparently he had to acquire the kingdoms again, I'm not sure if through conquest or diplomacy. At the height of his power, when Knut ruled all three kingdoms, he was the most powerful ruler in Western Europe after the Holy Roman Emperor. The thing is, the existence of this empire wasn't very natural and was very much dependent on one specific ruler at a time. The North Sea Empire collapsed immediately once Knut died in 1035. As a matter of fact, in Norway, it was already collapsing. By the winter of 1033, local leaders were so unpopular that they were forced to leave. Knut's son, Arthaknut, 
still became king of England, reuniting it with Denmark a while later, but made a generally bad impression as a king. There were some subsequent efforts to reunite the three kingdoms and recreate the empire by a few of those who had actually rebelled against it, especially by Magnus of Norway, but these efforts were not very successful. Again, the existence of the empire was always based around one ruler and the rulers kept dying in battle. All the way back in the east, the Empire of Trebizond. This is honestly my favorite story out of these ones. The Empire of Trebizond, or the Trapezuntine Empire, was a monarchy and one of the three successor states of the Byzantine Empire. In fact, their banner was also a double-headed eagle on a red field. It actually existed for a while, between 1204 and 1461. Their territory consisted of the far northeast corner of Anatolia, known as the Pontus, and south of Crimea. Although the extent of territory they ruled varied throughout time, even in the Pontus area it wasn't contiguous and had parts in between which they did not hold. The empire was formed in 1204 after a man called Alexios Komnenus declared himself emperor and settled in Trebizond. His dynasty had previously been the rulers of the Byzantine Empire some time before. You see, this country existed after Constantinople was sacked and the Byzantine Empire went into decline, but it still remained in existence for some more time, although extremely reduced. And so there was a dispute between some of Trebizond's heirs and the rulers of the remnants of the Byzantines as to who had claim over the title of Roman Emperor. Apparently, the Byzantines simply referred to the Trebizond Empire as the Principality of the Lazes and not an empire. It was only Emperor John II of Trebizond who abdicated his claim on Constantinople after the city had been taken and retaken by various other powers and instead turned his focus to the Caucasus region, claiming his title of Emperor over those regions. Trebizond survived the longest out of all Byzantine successor states. They lasted until 1461, when the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II conquered it after a month-long siege and took its ruler and his family into captivity. This officially marked the end of the Roman imperial tradition initiated by Augustus 1488 years before, with the birth of the Roman Empire. The Crimean Principality, a branch of Trebizond's empire, lasted another 14 years, falling to the Ottomans in 1475. The only one we'll see in America for this video is the Aztecs, although there are more examples. I had literally no idea about this, but apparently the Aztec Empire can also be called the Triple Alliance, because it consisted of an alliance between three city-states, and I'm going to mispronounce all of these words. The first was Mexico, Tenochtitlan, then Texcoco, and Tlacopan. These three city-states ruled the area in and around the Valley of Mexico from 1428 until the forces of the Spanish conquistadors defeated them in 1521. There's not much to say here because I literally summarized it in those sentences. The empire existed through the alliance and expansion of three three city-states, and then came the Spanish with their gunpower and destroyed pretty much all of it. It was located in central Mexico, and they had one capital city. And despite our idea that they are ancient, they really aren't. If you want to compare dates, the University of Oxford was founded around the year 1096, when the Aztec Empire only came to be 400 years later, in 1428, only lasting until 1521. In that year of 1428, Mexico Tenochtitlan allied with the other two and began expanding their empire. It is said their capital, an island with canals, was absolutely amazing and as big as London. The Aztecs didn't really have an internal decline as far as I know and their destruction is fully due to the arrival of the Spanish and the following wars, although some locals sided with the Spanish in rebelling against their imperial rulers. We also have the Zulu Kingdom in Africa. The Kingdom of Zulu or Zulu Empire was a monarchy in southern Africa that extended along the coast of the Indian Ocean from the Tugela River in the south to the Pongola River in the north. Now I couldn't find a lot of information on this but from what I could understand the Zulu Kingdom began with the rise to power of King Shaka. Shaka initiated many military, social, cultural and political reforms forming a well-organized and centralized Zulu state. He also made sure that the Zulu church didn't have too much influence, reintegrated, defeated tribal clans into the kingdom amongst other efforts to unite the Zulu people into one single state and 
consolidate its power. Through these efforts, they were able to establish a true Zulu kingdom, expanding its territory to the surrounding regions, but not for too long. In 1879, the British invaded, beginning the Anglo-Zulu War. After a single Zulu victory at the Battle of Izandlwana, the British army, in the fashion of what we saw the Mongol hordes did, regrouped and returned again to defeat the Zulus in the Battle of Lundi. The kingdom was absorbed into the colony of Natal and later became part of the Union of South Africa. Another empire but in the east is the Sikh Empire. Now apparently I may have exaggerated the size of this on the thumbnail map as well. The Sikh Empire existed from 1799 to 1849. They used a triangular green and red flag with golden symbols inside it. It was a state originating in the Indian subcontinent, formed under the leadership of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, who established a secular meaning non-religious empire based in the Punjab region. At its peak in the 19th century, the empire extended from the Khyber Pass in the west to western Tibet in the east, with an estimated population of 3.5 million people in 1831. It was the last major region in the area to be annexed by the British. The foundations of the Sikh Empire can be traced to as early as 1707, the year of the start of the downfall of the Mughal Empire. With the Mughal significantly weakened, the Sikh army grew stronger and split into different confederacies. Each of these confederacy armies controlled different areas and cities, sort of as independent warlords. This man, Ranjit Singh, defeated Afghan enemies in the west and gained enough power to declare himself Maharaja, beginning the unification of those independent Sikh confederacies. After his death, the empire was weakened and the arrival of the British brought on a war in which they were outgunned and so being defeated in the Anglo-Sikh wars. The empire came to an end, then becoming a part of the British Raj. And finally, going back to Europe, Galicia Volinia, later known as the Kingdom of Rus, existing between 1199 and 1349. Its territory was located in modern day Poland, Ukraine, and Slovakia. Essentially, the kingdom was formed because the leader of Galicia died with no heir, and so Roman prince of Ohinia inherited it. They gained some power through alliances, but were always somewhat of a battleground between Poland and Lithuania and Hungary. After King Lev's death in 1301, a period of decline ensued, losing territory to the Poles and the Hungarians. The Teutonic Order, the Lithuanians and the Mongols also counted themselves as enemies of the Rus. Lev's grandsons were the two final kings of Galicia Volinia, having ruled together but eventually they both died in battle, fighting against the Mongols, leaving no heirs. And so their dynasty came to an end. A Lithuanian prince became the ruler of Olenia and a Polish prince of Galicia. More conflicts followed between those who inherited the states and attempted to rule them with some independence. But it all ended in 1349, when the Polish king invaded and annexed the regions entirely. I still had a couple more in Africa to talk about, but this video is already pretty long, so I'll save those and others for a part two if you guys are interested. So leave any suggestions in the comments for other destroyed countries. I could add to that part two. So those are a few more countries that no longer exist, but for the reason of being conquered, destroyed, or annexed, by other nations. Remember to check out Conflict of Nations through the link in the description if you are interested in what I showed of the game. And subscribe if you want to catch future videos. I will see you next time for more general knowledge.